Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, we are meeting with uh, Charbonne, we have Benoit, uh, we have Dave, we have Daniel. And just for you guys from Charbonne, uh, I shared a investment report with the group. So they already have an idea of what this is about. Uh, but if we can start off with maybe 10 minutes of pitch about what Charbonne is all about, what you want to do, and then I'll ask a question, we'll open it up for questions from everyone else, and we'll just kind of uh, go with the flow. So go ahead and give us your 10 minute pitch. Okay, thank you, uh, Marius. So, uh, hi, everybody. My name is Dave, <clears throat> Dave Gagnon. So, um, I have a serial uh, uh, adventure in the sustainable business. I dedicated my career uh, in the renewable energy for the last 20 years. I uh, was very invested in the wind business, lithium business, and now as well uh, the hydrogen. Pleasure to meet you. Um, I will also in let introduce uh, Benoit with us. Yeah, thanks, Dave. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Benoit. I'm the Chief Financial Officer of Charbonne. Um, I, I'm a CPA, uh, work at uh, KPMG at the beginning of my career, and also one of my, uh, let's say, good related experience that I worked eight years at the head office, uh, managing finance team of Early Quit Canada in Montreal, um, where, let's say, I learned uh, all about uh, hydrogen and green hydrogen. Um, so I'm glad to have joined the team. Um, in in the summer of 2022. Nice to meet you all. Daniel, your turn. Good morning, everyone. My name is Daniel Charrette. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Charbonne and one of the founder of the company. Uh, my main uh, my main background is from renewable energy, so uh, wind energy since the last 25 years, starting back in 1998 with large Danish company, including Nygmicon Vassus and with many developers uh, running IPPs like Brookfield Power. Great to meet you. Okay, so so you guys, this is your background. Uh, you want to become a green hydrogen producer. Uh, you have some locations. So give us a pitch on the business a little bit. Yeah, we're uh, the first uh, Canadian mover here in Canada. So we're, uh, we're the first uh, listed company also on the TSX uh, oriented to produce uh, only the uh, green uh, molecule. Uh, we have a unique business model because we are a lot of people, uh, especially in the country here, talking about hydrogen. But at the end of the day, uh, who's buying hydrogen? So this is part of, part of the biggest challenge was solved uh, with the management. We signed a deal with Superior Plus a year and a half ago. Superior Plus created in 1953. Uh, doing four billions revenue uh, in US and Canada. They're the number one gas distributor of propane. Uh, it was one of the biggest challenge. Uh, we had to penetrate that market, but we are under contract to uh, sell 100% of our production uh, uh, in Canada, as well in Quebec and as well in Canada. So, as we said before, we have a strong, uh, strong experience in the energy business. Uh, we are very oriented to uh, produce hydrogen uh, with uh, the right energy, the right cost of energy, and the right base load of energy. Intermittent energy, we, are, uh, we have this, uh, this knowledge in our group. We know it's very challenging to produce uh, uh, with profit the, uh, the hydrogen. So we oriented our business plan uh, to be supported by the, mainly by the hydropower. This is why we uh, invest here in Quebec province. We have the cost we're looking for years. And also we invest in the, in the, in the uh, Manitoba state where we are supported by Manitoba uh, Hydro to provide also the cost of energy we're looking to produce uh, hydrogen. So let's, uh, let's continue with Ben about a few numbers, please. You know, before, before we go, I have a very important question. Yeah. I did my work. Charbon is a French word that means charcoal. Yeah, uh, explain, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, you're right. So, uh, so we're, uh, you know, Charbon, it, it was created to decarbonize our economy. We was inspired by uh, the carbon work and we had the H uh, in, in carbon, in Charbon, uh, to, uh, just to, to, to create uh, the sense of decarbonization with hydrogen and also hydropower and as well uh, human fact. So we're, uh, we're, for 20 years, Danielle and I, we are very uh, oriented on the ASG and set sustainable value. And uh, also uh, we have a little touch in our company about human sense and we, we're doing that company to decarbonize and, and it was why we, 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 we had that H to make a little significant. So Charbon has uh, production projects to produce green hydrogens um, from clean energy uh, that we put in water so we create the green hydrogen. So um, our two more advanced projects, so the, our uh, first is at Sorrel Tracy, uh, 45 minutes near Montreal. Uh, so it's, uh, you see on the screen, it's near port, near highway, still highway. Um, and and what we and why we went there is because Charbon team is also very good at identifying where is the clean energy available, and also available right now at the right cost. Uh, so we're getting let's say a sourcing uh, of clean energy from Hydro Quebec, for example, from for that plant, and also in the middle of uh, a lot of industrial uh, end users wanted to decarbonize their production. So to change their gray hydrogen uh, consumption right now to green. Um, so that first uh, first phase of that uh, facilities will be uh, up and running and producing hydrogen in 2024. Um, and uh, it's a project of uh, up to 25 megawatts plan, uh, which is will produce, let's say, 10 uh, tons uh, per day uh, of hydrogens. So that's something, let's say, that will, let's say, producing, let's say, um, from from five millions to up to, uh, uh, let's say, fifty millions uh, for that plan per year. Um, also, our model is to be decentralized. So our model is to have, let's say, smaller plans, but um, to be uh, closer to the end user. Uh, so that way, we will be able to reduce our distribution costs. So the distance between our production and the uh, delivery uh, to the end users. Because um, if you may or may not know, uh, Charbon is dedicating ourselves to the industrial merchant uh, market, uh, which means we will be delivering the hydrogen molecule by cylinders and also by two traders on, on uh, both trucks. So um, that, uh, that industrial, let's say, merchant market in hydrogen space is very, um, there, it, there's a price for each, cost, each customer. Each customer is different. Each customer is consuming a volume, a different volumes located at a different location. So all those factors is embedded into the final price charged to them. So by being, let's say, closer to the end user, the significant distribution cost that is embedded in that price will be able, will be reduced for us, and will be able to compete to be very competitive uh, versus a great price on the market right now. We have also a second project in Manitoba, Selkirk. It's uh, also where we have a lease over there, uh, and and our model is a bit of copy paste of uh, sorry, Tracy. It's all a uh, scale up, let's say, plants. We add electrolyzer along the way um, with, uh, let's say, around four to five phases per plan. I wanted to also to demonstrate to you that that's two projects of, uh, let's say, 16 that we have. Um, so that's our map where we have, let's say, 16 most development pr projects in uh, Canada and US where we will uh, deploying and where we have identified in the last three, four years where Shavon has worked to identify, like I said, the right location where is clean energy available at the right cost and in the middle of industrial margin, uh, hydrogen consumers. So that's a plan that's over four years. We want to start that those 16 plants 
and then we'll continue as you see we have other projects uh, that are the the dark uh, dots um and oh, by let's say in four years we should be able to put to to have plants producing uh, uh more than 150 megawatts plants uh and that would be more than 300 uh, millions of revenues generating so I can uh, maybe let the time of Daniel wanted to explain maybe a bit more. Thank you, Benoit. I guess uh, the decision of the company from the start was to create de-risk a project that would not be at risk financially at risk as we grow the green hydrogen market and migrating existing industrial users from dirty hydrogen to green hydrogen and get just prepared for the next steps, which would be a new development like large hubs, uh, seven large hubs, hydrogen hubs in uh, in US, uh, both for industrial processes and for uh, future mobility. So the, the project, the way that we are doing them is really, is really to follow the market growth. Uh, there's a large volumes of hydrogen uh, as an example, actually in California, which is about 750,000 ton of gray hydrogen, almost zero green hydrogen, and everyone is pushing on uh, to get that uh, decarbonized. So I guess our way of doing the development is locating great place where we can migrate easily uh, actual industrial users uh, from from the dirty hydrogen to the green hydrogen at uh, almost the same cost, considering that renewable energy in many areas, uh, we have access to great, a great price, but always, again, I'm insisting on this, connected to the grid and using virtual PPA or power purchase agreement with renewable energy production. So we got base load and we're not dependent on intermittent uh, solar or variable wind energy. So it's highly important that Charbon to follow up their uh, production and delivery contract that we are producing uh, green hydrogen 24 seven and get all the revenue out of it. Now, I would like to ask you about uh, barriers of entry into the business. You announced uh, a purchasing contract with Superior, I believe it was almost a couple years ago, and you're not producing green hydrogen yet. But even though it's been so much time, Superior is sticking with you. Nobody else is coming to satisfy the demand. So it makes me think that there is some barriers to entry. And I believe it has to be addressed because when I released the report to my group yesterday, there was a comment and I'm going to read it. I live in Quebec and I can produce green hydrogen in my garage via electrolysis. I could sell it myself to Charbonne's potential buyers. So I was wondering if you could address this and talk about barriers of entry because it's important. Mm. Couple things. Uh... <clears throat> We are just to prepare the company to to be a green hydrogen producer. It took uh, over two years of preparations of engineering. So uh, when you're doing this kind of operation, you need the certificate d'environnement of the of the Minister of Environment here. We are the only company ha have actually in Quebec province that CA. Um, it's it's we had to provide over three hundred seventy five pages to have uh, this certificate um also um also it's new hydrogen it's not it's not a it's not a game it's a it's it's super it's super important uh, in terms of security so you cannot uh, go to produce at my point of view uh, in in your garage that kind of product so but it's true we're we're a province where we have facility we have excellent price of energy it's a it's a conversion of electron in in the, in the green molecule uh, but the barrier to enter in that market it's it's super high 
uh, I think the people, generally speaking, they are underestimate th that that point. So the barrier to make distribution efficient distribution in the market it's very very high. We estimating with Charbon we save uh, over over 15 to 20 millions of costs to do that distribution with Superior. Superior, just in Quebec province, they have 75,000 accounts, uh, industrial accounts here in the province, over 800,000 accounts in North America. They have a warehouse, uh, drivers, as, as you know, and, and trucks on the road. So um, um, it's uh, it's also a question of credibility. credibility. We're talking at that time with few customers working for, that's an example with uh, Pratt & Whitney. So, uh, so with uh, Superior, uh, with Charbonne, we have that credibility to speak with that kind of customers who want to switch from gray hydrogen to the green hydrogen. So, it's not the, it's not easy like that. It's take time. It's take also a support by engineers. So, uh, so from the day one, also uh, BBA, we saw before on the other slide, uh, our. Uh, and they continue to be a partner with us. They are shoulders in the company. They was one of the first company I put a quarter million in the company. They was responsible to do uh, the hard engineering, uh, uh, supporting uh, Charbon to doing uh, what we introduce you at your investor, the uh, Marius. Maybe I could add also to the question that the sourcing of clean energy, it's not so easy to have. So the availability about the electricity uh, clean electricity to get your green hydrogen, it's not everyone that can afford to, to get it. Uh, so Charbon, that's, let's say, something we differenti differentiate from others, is that we have a strong, experienced team in clean energy, knowing very well the American markets, and that we have been able to, to make relation and identify uh, where that energy is available and at the right cost. Uh, so, and, and something, maybe as a, another barrier, it's also getting equipment. So, uh, electrolyzers, it's not so easy to get it. There is some lead time to get it. So you need to have, let's say, good relationship, partnership, and already discussion with the suppliers to get those equipment. And Charbon does, and Charbon had got, um, as uh, had an approach, is having an approach of having multiple suppliers so that's reducing that barrier where we'll, uh, we are able to talk to Cummins, we're able to talk to Nell, we're able to talk to an European distributor, Edogen, for example, in Europe. So that's all things that have taken time uh, and effort and, and, and costs that Chabon has invested in the last few years to get in 2024 to start concretely having uh, producing uh, producing uh, facilities. I guess uh, the the most important thing, the way I see it, is that we have a problem in the world that there is not enough green hydrogen being produced, and Charbon is trying to solve this problem by satisfying the demand. Am I seeing it correct? Totally correct. Right now, let's say nine, all the hydrogen is produced 99.9% .9 gray. And um, all the industrials that are consuming that gray hydrogen right now wants to, to switch to green. They have been asked by their stakeholders, shareholders, government to have a uh, clean uh, objective. Um, but in the market, there's no so much available. Uh, so that's why, let's say, as soon as Charbon is able to produce green hydrogen molecules, it will be very easy to solve because industrial consumers are waiting for it. So that's why uh, I saw maybe a chat, uh, we're asking about Superior. So Superior will, uh, as I accept, and will buy per contract 100% of our production uh, from our facilities. Okay, you want me to, uh, I can read a question and then we- Or, or okay, I mean, who, who, whoever wants to answer. <laughs> yeah, okay. But we'll, uh, so want to refer, so is Superior mandated to supply a certain portion of energy from hydrogen? Why would not they just use hydropower directly to satisfy renewables goals? If so, for how long is the contract? So to answer that question, um, Superior is a distributor. So Superior want, is a very good distributor, having distribution equipment uh, in North America. 
and where we have, let's say, knowledge in terms of manipulating gases, industrial gases, and distributed it. So they don't want to get into production. They, they just have acquired, for example, uh, Sertarius uh, last year, which is another uh, distributor, and also having, let's say, uh, hydrogen, more hydrogen equipment to superior. So they, their objective is to continue to specialize, uh, increase, it's a, increasing the number of gases they're distributing, but they don't want to produce. That's not their, their core business. Where Charbon, our core business, is the opposite. We want to produce. We are people uh, having the knowledge and experience to get the clean energy and producing green hydrogen. So that's a very good partnership where us, it's producing. We don't want to distribute. There's a lot of barrier of an investment to be, to, to be done in distribution. So that's where, let's say, it's a perfect match between Sperger and us. The contract, it's, a, it's over a five years contract. Um, and there will, let's say, uh, so that's, let's say, the main, uh, yeah, main turn of uh, that contract. If I switch, what is the cash flow forecast for 2024 and 2025? So um, in 2024, like I said, we, we, sh sh we will be producing at Suratrici with our first phase. Um, so in terms of cash flow, that's first phase we're generating, let's say, one or two millions per Per, uh, per year of revenues. But, but uh, starting 2025, we'll start to increase to five, 10 millions. Uh, so there's, uh, there will be uh, a, let's say an increase of revenues in 2025, where each, let's say 2.5 megawatts plants generating 5 million of revenues and generating a BD over revenues of more than 50%. Are you confident the contract will renew? Is it a fixed price contract for the five years? So the contract with Superior right now, it's a share of the end user consumer price. So right now we're seeing to the market uh, data about gray hydrogen being sold in our industrial merchant market. It's a floor of $30 per kilogram. So you don't, don't look at the prices that let's say that they are published in, in some articles right now where they're talking about five, six, uh, under $10 per kilogram. That's that's not the industrial market reality. The reality to the end user consumer, um, it's not pipelines. It's not our, our model is not high volumes by pipeline directly to the end user consumer where the prices are very lower and, and margin lower. So us, it's industrial merchant. It's a floor of $30 uh, per kilogram price. And even more, there, there are some, let's say, uh, cylinders that could be sold over $100 per kilogram. So uh, Chabon would get 50% of that, and 50% would go to Superior Propane, uh, Superior Plus, uh, for their distribution. So for us, it's a very good way of maximizing, let's say, the, our revenues. Uh, because as Marius just said, there's a uh, very more demands of green hydrogen than, than, than production right now. So there will also be a, a push up uh, on the price to get it. So uh, we're very comfortable with that mechanism right now. Add Benoit that the uh, Superior Plus has acquired another Calgary-based company called Sartaris. Mm -hmm. And Sartaris is already delivering uh, different industrial gases and natural gases as hydrogen into many uh, customer, such as General Motors and Nikola Trucks as well. So there's a complementary there with the adding of Sartaris into the uh, family of Superior Plus, Superior Plus that will add more customer uh, finally to Charbon production. A little bit more about the Superior Plus contract. Uh, the Superior Plus contract, the way it's built, it's, a, it's an automatic renewal after five years. So negotiation of the contract is not needed. Superior will receive, uh, for each of our facility, uh, Superior uh, will be using the uh, same contractual agreement. Okay. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think we have any more questions. Uh, so do you have any final thoughts that you want to share with us before we finish i would like to say a big thank you to everybody we are aligned to deliver we're uh, we're um, 
we're on track with our engineers and our suppliers. The, 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 that's an example. The deposits are are done, so the components are in the factories ready to ship. So um, I'm very confident uh, we will execute uh, what we mentioned. So um, and uh, Daniel and I we're working together for close to 20 years now. So we are we had the great industrial experience together. So. Um, and um, I have the right person to uh, to to execute with uh, Ben. Also, have a uh, hundred percent knowledge in the hydrogen business. So, I will I would like to say a big thank you to everybody. I guess we could add one thing: is that Charbon twenty twenty four should be a great year for uh, not only for Sorel Tracy uh, starting the production, but as well to kickstart many other projects, as Benoit mentioned, on the sixteen project that we are. Uh, planning for the next four or five years. Um, the U.S. right now is going full steam, uh, full steam on the seven large hubs uh, for clean and green hydrogen. They just announced a couple of days ago that the U.S. Uh, DOE has uh, hired a consortium uh, to lead the negotiation for those uh, consortium for those hubs. Charbon is part of two of the winning hubs. One called Mac H2, which is the Midwest hub, uh, including Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, and, and other states. And the other winning hub is Arches in California, for which Charbon is, has also uh, been involved from day, from day one in that hub. So we are working extensively, not only to uh, put uh, the uh, put the uh, Sorel Tracy online, but as well making sure that our pipeline of projects is growing and making sure that we have the energy uh, necessary to uh, to have those projects and build that network that would be reducing the cost of green hydrogen and making a, uh, making it a byproduct that everyone would want uh, to buy. And then uh, finally, let's hear the final words from Benoit. I'm very proud that I learned to pronounce your name properly now. So let's have you finish it off. Yeah, thank you. Um, and, and nice pronunciation. So um, I joined Charbon because before joining Charbon, I was knowing all the challenges about green hydrogen. And Charbon is starting all of them the right way. So that's where I am still here after one more than one year. Now, one year and a half, uh, I'm here. So still confident into the project, the competence and experience of the team. And financially, we're tackling the things, let's say, the right way. And we have right now the great partners to, to go that company in 2024. So um, for me, it's a great timing for investing. <laughs>